Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another lav mic review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Boya BYM1, which is a recorder for smartphones, DSLRs, camcorders, audio recorders, PCs, and a bunch of other stuff. And if you are interested in this lav mic, it'll set you back around 20 bucks on Amazon, as per usual, link in the description. And for this video, since it is a smartphone lav mic, I'm recording it directly to my iPhone 7 Plus with a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter. I know, so dumb, but I will do no post processing to the audio, but I may boost it in post. So check the doobly-doo for more information. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Obviously you're going to get the microphone. You get a foam windscreen. You get the microphone clothing clip. You get a 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter adapter. You get an LR44 battery. You get a carrying pouch and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, this thing just feels like the $20 lav mic that it is. The capsule is all plastic, but it does feel like decent plastic at least. The microphone clip has plenty of room to clip onto your clothing. The cable is just standard rubber and it feels like it may wear out after extended use. There is a capsule in line that has a switch to go between off slash smartphone or camera. And to my understanding, you're gonna need to use the camera setting if you're recording to, you guessed it, a camera, or if you're plugging this into your interface using the 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter adapter. You can unscrew this capsule and that's where you'll find access to the battery compartment. The cable continues on and measures in at a full length of six meters and it terminates into a 3.5 millimeter TRRS jack. As far as specs, this thing has an omnidirectional polar pattern, a frequency response of 65 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 30 decibels, an impedance of 1000 ohms, and a battery type requirement of LR44, and apparently it has a 700 hour battery life. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to determine what the actual polar pattern is and how the audio changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now I'm banging on a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blues directly in front of me to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. So just to give you a real world example of how this mic could improve your audio, I'm recording on my iPhone 7 Plus using the front facing camera directly into the camera app about two feet away from the phone. And this is how the audio would sound using the internal microphone. Now I'm recording directly into the Rode Rec app on my iPhone 7 Plus, and you should theoretically be able to use this mic on any smartphone that has a 3.5 millimeter TRRS plug. Now I have the mic set to camera mode, plugged directly into the Zoom H1 line input with the gain set at 45%, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I'm recording directly to my MacBook Pro plugged into the 3.5 millimeter TRRS jack with my microphone input gain set at around 14%, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have the microphone connected directly to the TRRS jack on my Windows 10 machine. The input volume is set at around 80%, and the microphone boost is at plus 20 decibels, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have the microphone set on camera mode, plugged into the Focusrite Scarlett Solo using the provided 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter adapter. I have my gain set at around 80% on this thing, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have the mic set to camera mode, plugged into a new Sabrent USB sound card, which is model USB SBCV. The microphone input gain on my Mac is set to around 30% and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have the microphone set to camera mode and I have the mic connected directly to the microphone input of the Canon T6i with the gain set at around 40% and this is how the microphone sounds. So overall for 20 bucks, I think this thing's an absolute steal. But just a quick side note, when I was trying to record this mic directly into the iPhone's camera app, I found that it was clipping. So if you plan on recording video onto your iPhone, you will need to download an app that allows you to adjust the microphone's input gain manually. But now let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of this mic. In terms of pros, this thing seems to be universally compatible. It sounds super nice for 20 bucks. It has a 700 hour battery life. It's super cheap and the cable is insanely long. And then in terms of cons, it has a non-standard battery, which I hate. The build quality isn't amazing, but I can't fault it for that because of the price tag. And it has a super long cable. 
And yes, I know long cable was on the pros and cons list. It's just, I think when you need it, it's super nice to have, but when you don't need a long cable and you have it, it's just super annoying and cumbersome. So honestly, I think I would recommend this thing to anybody who's looking for a lav mic who's on a budget. The only people I wouldn't recommend this for are vloggers or people who are constantly running and gunning because the six meter long cable would just trip you up and just get way too annoying. But other than that, if you need a cheap lav mic, hell yeah, this thing is freaking awesome. All right, guys, well, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If I'd have sucked, thumbs down. If you want to influence the mics and gear that I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage and cast your votes there. Also, don't forget to follow me on all the social media stuff. Links at the bottom of the screen. If you want more videos just like this, subscribe by clicking the logo directly beneath me. And I will see you next Tuesday. Talk to you later. Bye.